In this media, we are going to learn about SART, that is Search and Rescue Radar Transponders. We have already covered the EPUB. Okay, in our previous video, you can watch that. There are differences between SART and EPUB based on the frequency of operation. That is in mega, uh, megahertz. That is 406 and beyond. And this is in gigahertz. We are going to see all those things. EPUB, that is a secondary means. So if you want to watch in detail, you can watch that video of EPUB. Here, we'll, here we will confine our discussion to the SART. In GMDSS, it is the main means of trans. Uh, this is communication for locating ship in distress or their survival craft and their carriage on board. Ship is mandatory. It is also mandatory like EPUB. The SART is a small battery powered, same like EPUB also, omnidirectional radar receiver and transmitter. They also had two uh, transmitter, the EPUB. They also have transmitter receiver. They may also be incorporated into a float-free satellite EPUB. The battery fitted to a SART allow operation in the standby condition for at least 96 hours plus a further 8 hours whilst being interrogated. Now, purpose and method of operation of a SART. A SART operates in 9 gigahertz okay, radar frequency and on receiving a signal from the ships or aircraft radar transmit a series of response signal the SART can be activated manually you can activate this SART manually or automatically so that it will there after respond when interrogated the method of using and activating SARTs uh, varies over the type available but instructions are marked obviously on shipping you see every equipment has their uh, method of instruction these response Signals will be seen on the ship or aircraft radar screen as a line of 12 dot 0.64 nautical miles apart extending approximately 8 nautical miles outward from the SART's position along its line of bearing. This unique radar signal is easily recognized and allows the rescue vessel or aircraft to locate the survivor craft. Another 12 dots are produced also 0.64 nautical mile apart. Now, a SART will not respond to 3 GHz radar. Okay, means X band ko ye ye karta hai, S band ko ye nahi karega. Okay, now this is the thing. Now, on activation, the SART will provide a visible and or audible indication to its correct operation. It will be provided indication when it is being interrogated by that we have already seen. Now, location distance when we talk about X band radar se jab ye locate karta hai scanner height of 5 meter within 8 nautical mile a SART should also respond when interrogated by compatible X band radar fitted to an aircraft operating at a height of 3000 feet at a distance of at least 30 nautical miles. As height is the key to improving the distance that a SART will respond to a radar signal, survivor should endeavor to mount the SART as high as possible in a lifeboat or life rod by lashing it to an oar etc. Some models of SARP incorporated, those are the thing means as soon as you be uh, closer to SARP, your chances of rescue is more. So how we go to the location and then error is there. Okay, we'll just go through it. When SART is being interrogated by search radar, the SART receiver is sweeping the radar band continuously. Search for radar signal. Once interrogated or triggered by the expand radar in range, the sweeps become alternatively slow and fast. As all marine radars do not operate on exactly the same frequency within 9, 9 GHz radar band, as some small delay in the SART response as the SART receiver locks onto the searching radar signal. Okay, because it starts searching, so there is a delay. Once the SART receiver has locked onto the searching radar, there is also a delay on the SART switches from the receive or transmit mode and it continues to sweep. Okay, so there are two types of delay. One is the searching and after searching, it, locate, it locates and then locks it. Okay, uh, when it closes, then fast response, those dots we were talking about, the first dot of the SART response displayed will be no more than 150 meter distant from the true location of the SART. When the range is in the such that the slow sweep response are seen. Now, 
when we talk about uh, rudder uh, location distance a start should be sorry when we talk about GMDSS carriage requirement the GMDSS regulation require vessel between 300 and 500 gross tonnage to carry one SART okay vessel over 500 GRT must carry two okay it must be at a stored location from where they can be rapidly placed in survival craft so it has to be at that position when we talk about passenger ships then we have for Roro ships then we have for free fall light board then we have for high school speed craft uh, you can uh, read it individually by pause uh, you can pause the video and read it then when we talk about servicing and testing that a radar transfer must be inspected tested and have its batteries replaced at intervals specified by the manufacturer whatever manufacturer recommends you need to replace the batteries aboard aboard ship each sort shall be examined at least once a month to check how secure it is mounting and for sign of damage we also test the SART okay when we talk about SART is subject to the annual performance test now when we talk about perform the SART tested is professional equipment intended to provide accurate independent validation with the it is as per the SOLAS requirement so this is the test uh, SART tester that you see in the image okay so it is approved by the SOLAS and with this we are testing the now we also have radar target enhancer that is not uh, for us so in this video we saw what are the regulation for the uh, SART what is a basically a SART what are the regulation for the SART for different different types of ships okay and what all maintenance to be carried out how we do testing of the SART and how it functions uh, the SART and what are the uh, some of the differences between SART and EPUB Thank you so much. Thank you for your valuable time. All the very best.